Hey everybody, I'm Shamisha with Show It, and today we are going to be talking about writing copy for your sales and or landing pages that will convert. Um, are you tired of having this beautiful Show It website and it's just not converting the way you want it to? Well, today our expert copywriter, Ashlyn Carter, is going to be sharing um, her proven strategies and techniques to help drive those sales and increase business. Um, Ashlyn is the founder of Ashlyn Writes. It's a copywriting and marketing curriculum source for creatives. It's a copywriting business, might I say. Um, she has supported industry titans like Jenna Kutcher, Amy Porterfield, and Julie Solomon. Um, so really, get ready to be inspired. <laughs> Ashlyn is a true leader in her field, um, and today she's here to share with you her wealth of knowledge. Um, and I'm super excited for her to help you take your business to the next level. So please help me welcome Ashlyn Carter. Hello. Hey, everybody. All right, Mike check, are we good? I'll go ahead and get going today. Well, I am so excited to jump into this. This is my favorite thing to talk about. I have a lot of feelings about sales copy. So we are going to jump straight in today to the content and the curriculum. All right. First of all, what a time to be alive. Let's even get my slides going. There we go. My sister sent me that girl on Instagram recently. Uh, somebody else probably follows her there. Uh, she just like wears millennial, elder millennial fashions throwbacks and always makes me laugh. Uh, we also survived. We know what it was like to survive the Oregon Trail. Pat yourself on the back. We did it. A lot of us were building web pages back in the day. We also know the cultural significance of Lauren not going to Paris. So we've seen some things. We've seen some things, right? But additionally, we also know that tech has changed so much over the years. So we saw it in these early days and then we've seen it now. And now we're able to build websites on things like Show It. I stink and love the Show It platform so much. It's so easy to go in there and change things around and move things. And my goodness gracious, I'm grateful for advancements that have allowed things like Show It to take place. This is what enables us to serve our clients and our customers, no matter what kind of business you have here today. So Technology, I'm so grateful for tech in so many ways. And I consider myself an early adapter. If you're here, you probably are in kind of a similar boat. Speaking of technology, though, there's been something that has been big on the change up scene kind of since about last November was when it really made a splash in a way that would affect our industry. I want to hear from y'all in the chat. I actually pulled it up on another screen so I can't see chat because I am a chat junkie and I want to be able to talk to y'all. Who has dabbled in AI copywriting tools, whether it is ChatGPT or any kind of other tool that's out there? And I would even say a further stretch is, has anybody felt personally victimized by some of the AI tools out there that threaten to take pieces of our jobs? I know Canva unveiled these incredible tools and capabilities that you can do now that um, will enhance a designer's toolkit, but it's they're so scary, it's good sometimes. So. It's incredible to see what these things can do. Tech comes in and promises to be able to solve all of our problems, right? To come and just make everything a piece of cake. But what I wanna ask here today is like, does it really, does it really solve all of our problems? Can these things write all of our copy for us in a way that sells our clients and our customers in a way that serves and loves them like we do? Well, I don't know if you know this, but Uber fairly recently piloted human or self-driving cars. And what they found is a lot of those cars ran red lights, had wrecks. So what it seems is I would rather actually get picked up by a person after all. I need the human touch to stay there. I would say that when it comes to your selling and your copy, the way that you're able to explain what you do, who you are, what you do, how you serve people, you need words for that. And while there's things like bots, algorithms, copywriting templates. I'm going to talk about those today. Copywriting AI tools. I'm going to talk about that, those today. As fantastic as they are and they can get you started, you need your human touch, you need your personality, and you need to be able to do that quickly for the real sales magic. These days, I've been talking to my email list and my audience and my membership a lot about these days, the way that AI has ramped up the production speed of content marketing and pretty quality content marketing, you cannot afford to sound bland anymore. You just cannot be mediocre. You have to be able to sound like a person. You have to be able to be winsome and attractive to your ideal clients. And that happens with your copy. 
I say this all the time too. If you can't tell me why you do what you do, the way you do it differently or better than somebody that does the same thing that you do, you have to be able to answer that. If I hold a mic up to you, you have to be able to answer that with words. You can't just show me your portfolio and mime to it and say that's enough. I need you to be able to communicate with a message. After all, the whole difference in pretty good conversion copy and dynamite conversion copy that I joked around my slide at the beginning, I don't know if you saw, gets that, you know that meme where you take the credit card and they, they bang it on tables like a TikTok meme for a while. I'm talking, I want credit card out kind of reaction from your people. The difference in that is personality every single time. I found this quote when I was researching for this because as good as these tools and these templates and these generators are, internet culture and slang evolve every day and catching those nuances and being able to fold it into your copy to your captions to your inquiry response emails to any of that that is a uniquely human skill and something you're absolutely capable of doing in fact we'll take that one step further i want to hear from you in the chat right now type in sb if you consider yourself a small business owner um, and while you're typing that in and pull up a chat to see this, I love hearing from, let's see, the conscious publicist, Nicole, we've got Sarah Ivy, Lisa, it's so fun to hear from y'all. So I want to hear from you if you're an SB, small business owner, type in. I also want you to just put a pin in it and think about, is what you do so is it something that people can get by in life without? <laughs> because a lot of us people can get by and life without. I saw Kim jumped in here. Kim is inside my membership and she said yes. Um, or I know what she does and I would say Kim is a lot of us do something that people can get by in life without. So because of that, it's all the more important that you be able to lawyer up and explain your value, especially in this economy, especially with what's going on in the world. Look at all the SBs pouring in. I know the chat's a little bit delayed for me. They are pouring in. So a lot of us, I see there's some photography people here, sleep consulting, public speaking. Um, there's a lot of things that we need to be able to argue for, right? We're going to talk about how to do that today. Again, the tools that we've talked about are good. They're just tools, but it's kind of like what a calculator is to math. And in a very specific example that I know nothing without, nothing about, some people don't do math well unless they have a calculator around, unless they have the crutch of the tool and they can do it a lot faster. I don't want tools to be crutches for you. I want them to be like, if you're a chef, I want them to be like knives that you've got at your at the ready and you can use them to do even better and more beautiful works of art, okay? Because if you take, like I said, you take away the calculator, most people are toast and I don't want that to be the thing that happens for you in your sales copy. So I want you to use the tools. I'm gonna pepper you up with tools today. I've got so many uh, different resources. I hope you have your phone out and ready because I've got a bunch of QR codes for you that are gonna point you to other resources. I want you to use those, but you do have to be able to add your own brand and spin to things. Otherwise, like I said earlier, you're going to sound just like everybody else. And the thing is, there's never been a time to sound like you and to write like you talk. Look at where ad dollars are being spent these days on platforms that we're on every day. Instagram, TikTok. Look at all the user generated content that's put in front of our face. Does anybody remember back in like 2016, 17, when we used to, before we posted on Instagram, we had to make sure that it fit our grid pattern. If we were gonna do dark light, dark light, our whole aesthetic with our, our grid on Instagram was so important. Look at Instagram now, it is a hot mess and people love it. It's things don't match. It's okay to be a little bit off brand and to have a feed that's a little bit messier user generated content is popular. There's never been a better time to be more real and authentic in you when you're having your copy out there. Okay. I say this all the time to my students and to my audience, no matter what you do. And I know we had I called out a few different things that people do. We've got all the different types of business. You need to know enough to be dangerous because you are your own best spokesperson. You cannot hire somebody every single time you need a piece of messaging to go somewhere either on your website or an email or a customer service template response that has to, you've got to know enough to be dangerous so you can do that i hear this all the time that ashlyn i am not a writer though i don't even like writing it's not my favorite that's not why i started my business i hear that all the time that's exactly why i started my business 
If we haven't yet met, I know there's some people here I haven't. Hello, my name is Ashlyn Carter. Shamisha introduced me. I have a boutique copywriting agency called Ashlyn Writes and a copywriting template shop called The Copy Bar. I love what I do so much. I am obsessed with helping people figure out how to make more money with their words and argue for what they do. I believe that creativity and beauty and art are a thing that the world needs more of. We need more of what you do. And so the way we can do that is to make sure that you get paid for what you do so you can make more of it. And that's why I do what I do. And I'm so excited to dig into this today. So if you had not yet heard of when it comes to copywriting, direct response copy or conversion copy. I'm gonna break that down because I want things to be personality packed. I want them to be a delight to read, but I want them to make an action happen. I want you to get paid for what you do. And as easy as that is to say, sometimes it's a little bit harder to do. I also think it's hard to do, especially this day and age, for copy to be clear and concise but also a total blast to read. I want it to be worth reading in and of itself because it is hilarious or so witty or so clever or just enjoyable to read. It's inspiring. Whatever your brand of fun is, I want your copy to reflect that. And while I want it to make an action happen, I want it to be worth the price of reading itself. A lot of times we think in binary, right? I am left brain, I am right brain, I am creative, I am way more mathy, more strategic. And sometimes we think about that with our messaging too. But what I want to argue for is maybe it's a little more like this. Instead of an or situation, I think you can be both. I think a lot of us here, I saw all those SBs, saw all those SBs in the chat. If you're a small business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you own and operate a business, my goodness, of course you're strategic. You have to be. You can't survive a day on the job without being strategic. But a lot of us here, because I know the kind of people that show it gathers, I know the kind of people that I have in my audience, we're also creative, we're, we're dreamers, we're vision casters. So you can be both, I would argue that that's how you are innately, and so I want your copy to be reflective of that too, okay? I want it to be action-packed and make something happen, but I also want it to be creative and fun to read, okay? I want to, to outline before I get into the meat of today's content, I want to outline kind of my vision about what your copy should be like because I read far too much copy before I get my hands on it that is either one or the other and I want you to come more to the center on that, okay? So what we're going to do today for the practicum side of the lesson, I'm getting used to which arrow I have to hit, sorry. <laughs> there we go. I want us to tackle a page that we all have some sort of in our business, a sales page or a landing page. So what I mean by this, a sales page is something that directs specifically to an offer. If you are a service provider, can you put service in the chat right now? If you're a service provider, you have a landing page that talks about how I can work with you or outlines your service. Some people call that their experience page. That's another version of a sales page. Uh, it just functions a little bit different. Um, a landing page could be a freebie page or where you're getting people to sign up for your newsletter page. I'm less talking about home pages and about pages, but those could be kind of lumped into landing pages. The most important thing that sums both of these up for me is that we understand that these pages elicit an action. There is a very specific thing that we want people to do when they click on these pages on your website, okay? All right. I'm going to stay on this screen for just a sec because I want you to be able to grab this QR code. Uh, look at all of the service providers I just came over. We've got Tara, Madison, Kelsey, Nicole, Ariel, Tabitha, Candace, Jackie and Jay, Nick, Marlena, Melody. Okay, tons of service providers. You're in the right spot. So we'll um, that actually helps because I can help uh, alter a little bit some of my examples as we move through things today. So I want you to grab right now this QR code and pull it up on your phone because I've got some tools that will help you out and I'll talk about them more today. But one thing I want you to have on hand is this Trello board I made that has more than 200 different AI prompts that you can plug into a tool like ChatGPT and get better copy faster. Um, I have a lot of thoughts on AI and I'm putting out YouTube, a three-part YouTube series. One comes out today, one came out last week one comes out next week, talking to you about how you can use these to rev up your copywriting in your business. So I've got some resources out there. I'm not going to spend too much time on that today, but I want you to use this as a tool. And then I also want you to just know that I have a whole template where I dive into more of the framework of what your sales, your services, your offer page needs to have on it. I have one in my shop and I outline it in depth. I've had so many clients and customers um, 
install it on show it and it's absolutely beautiful i'm giving you these resources up front because today i want to go deeper than the formulas and the frameworks and i want to talk to you about actually how do you fill them out how do you populate them what kind of copy goes into it that turns heads and opens wallets and like i said at the beginning these are just tools these are formulas these are frameworks and they're only going to work if you know how to work them okay keep clicking along. So let's go ahead and talk about how to write these sales and landing pages and do it in a way that the templates and the bots and all of your swipe files can't quite do. So this is the meat and potatoes of today. So the first thing that I want to get to is I want to talk to you about a selling blind spot that everybody has because I want to make sure that you come against it and you overcome it. So we all have this and it's that we typically sell like we like to be sold to. Who in here, type emo in the chat if you're in emotional. Yes, those of you, I will repost. I'm going to hit, don't you worry, your pretty little head. I'm going to update these links. I've got lots of links, and then I'll tell you the other one at the end. And I'll give you these slides, too, at the end of today, okay? Um, I've got lots of goodies, so just stick around, and I'll go get those. Every, you sell like you like to be sold to, typically. This is the majority of human beings do this. It's just basic psychology. You argue like your head likes to hear an argument. I am a very, very rational buyer, and my team has to remind me during the launch, Ashlyn, hit on the story again, hit on the emotions again, which is interesting because a lot of my audience, I would say a majority of you are probably more of an emotional buyer. A lot of visionary, creative type entrepreneurs are. They want to hear, how is this going to help me impact the world? How is this going to help me achieve my big goals and dreams? How is this going to help me make what I have in my head and what I can see? That what this means that there's different buying styles and there's four big ones and I outlined them. I can give you another um, resource right now and I can tell you that the I'm sorry, y'all. I'm a little slow because I'm not used to hitting this arrow key. I kept, I hit my mouse and I think, where's my slide? Ashlynwrites.com slash quiz or you can grab this QR code if you want to know what your selling style is and you want to know what the other threes are because what I want you to know is that you're doing yourself a disservice if you're only selling one way. This is why long copy works. This is why copy frameworks work and formulas, because not everyone reads a website like you. Not everyone wants to understand and offer the same way you do. We have different things that we need. So let's go through this a little bit more and figure out, OK, how can we come against that and what do we need to do about it? So like I said, I just did, I got off an auditing call with the members of the Copy Bar Collective, which is my membership at one o'clock. And I saw some great examples of this. Our students execute so well when they get in, they apply our templates. People still read long copy. They will still scroll. They don't read boring copy or they don't read copy that they cannot get through because they can't, it looks like crime and punishment and they can't find their way. They can't read it like a menu, which is what I want you to think about it as. You know, when you go to a restaurant and you open the menu, your eyes can very quickly skim and see what you want to read and what you won't. Don't like cocktails? Great. You can skip to another section. Not a dessert person? Don't worry about that section. Want to go straight to You're an appetizers fan? You go up there. You know exactly where to go because your eye can pop to what it needs to very quickly. And I want your web copy to function the same way. Not just your website, though, but your sales pages and your landing pages. I need to be able to stand back there on my website and scroll down this page on a desktop. And I need to be able to understand what sections are. That's really important. You've got to write for the skimmer. Another thing that you can do, and again, I'm going to reference that call I had with our members inside the Copy Bar Collective because they knocked it out of the park. Maybe during Q&A, I can have some time to talk about and give examples of this. But don't have lazy crossheads. When you have, a, and I'm going to show you an example of this in just a sec. When you have a headline in the middle of the page, like a section headline, that's called a crosshead. I know that's a fancy word, but that's all that is. So a section headline that just says, like frequently asked questions, like what the section is, you're wasting your precious internet breath. Add voice, add personality to those sections. Give a little bit more. Don't say, look at this example. Let me see if I can, if it's the next one. Yep. Okay, this is taken from a recent client sales page. 
instead of saying something like here, like, does any of this, do you struggle with any of these pain points or something that is very clear? We went ahead and had some fun with the voice and the copy. Reels and carousels and lives, oh my, step on in as a safe space here. That's a way to tell the client, hey, you're in the right place if any of these strike a nerves, but we did not say you're in the right place if. Instead, we clued that in with a different kind of copy. Okay. I want to hear too from those of you in the chat. And I'm going to take a sip of water so I can let this populate in. But what percentage of your web copy do you think people read on your website? I think I might have some of my people in the chat too that could be able to answer this. I love Meredith, Tira, Ariel, the conscious publicist said emo. I didn't even realize this. Emo said Carol. Um, yeah, there's make sure that this is why this is important to have these different sections. And I'm going to give you a framework in a minute that includes all of the different sections because some people are going to be attracted to more data driven sections like the faqs like the price of it and how the price lays out some people are going to be really attracted to the plan and how it works okay i click buy then what happens some people don't care about that they want to see stories they want to see testimonials they want to see how other people have used this um i love y'all are actually and this is great five ten percent fifteen you're hitting right around it it's about twenty percent so if you think about all all of your words on your website and then if I just like we, we stripped it all down to just the black and white words and we take a little the 20% of that if that's all they're reading if that's all they're reading are they gonna raise their hand to work with you that is an honest question to sit there and think about so that does not mean none of this means you need less copy on your website okay because even if you had less copy they're still gonna read 20% <laughs> this means you need better copy okay this means the copy that is there has to work and it has to work over time y'all did good on the quiz question well done okay let me show you some more examples of crossheads and headlines that work so this white section down at the bottom on this client's page instead of saying about Trina, I cannot stand about pages that say about your name. No, you have precious breath. Don't waste it. Instead of saying that, she says, meet your new business besties. We make you look good. That's what I'm talking about. That is a headline right there. That is a sub headline. Uh, quit getting, see how you could stand back in this copy. You don't even have to read all of the little sections or all, sorry, all of the body copy below each section because the lines tell you if you want to keep reading or not. Quit getting distracted by what everybody else is doing. If that strikes a nerve, you can keep reading. If it doesn't, keep scrolling. You'll be okay. All right. Let me give you, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and get into the framework that I wanted to hand you over. Okay. So this is a framework that I use all the time. I made it up, but it works like gangbusters because it speaks to both the emo buyers that we saw people chime in with that and those of us who need more of a fact driven argument. So what I want you to do is have the right messaging hierarchy or framework. Who has, well, who has heard me say copy dictates design before? I'll ask that. I say it every time I'm on a stage. I say it all the time on calls. I probably said it on Instagram. Copy dictates design, not the other way around. You need to figure out the messaging hierarchy first and write the copy away from the design so you can make sure that the message is argumentative in a good way on its own without the crutches or the beauty of design. It needs to be able to be argued well, and then you plug it into the design and the design becomes a vehicle to illustrate the message and to take somebody through it. I say that all of the time, and that's something I want you to think about right now if you've never heard that before. Because if you can then start with the right framework and the right messaging hierarchy, all you then gotta do is lawyer up and bring in the evidence that I'm gonna show you how to do right now. So I've done a whole YouTube video on it. You, I know this is playing on YouTube. You could search it where I talked about how to lawyer up in your messaging and give data points and give support every piece of copy that you talk about with some sort of piece of data and evidence. I love it. Sarah said, I can't even design until I have the copy. Absolutely. Rachel, yes. What this does when you're able to start with the message hierarchy first is that it's going to simplify your message because then what you're doing is deciding what needs to be proven and then it goes and gets the evidence. Elf fans, anybody a fan of Elf in the house? You remember that moment in the movie where 
he swings open the door of the cafe in New York and he says, congratulations, best coffee ever, way to go. And they're all like, okay, we forgot that sign is even out there. It's been out there for 30 years. That's what I mean. Like they had no proof points, no data points to back it up. So if you're saying things on your website, talking about your high end experience, talking about your laid back personality, how clients, um, they, they love to work with you. You're giving me all of this stuff. I need evidence. I need the receipts and you need to show them. Even for our people that are emotional purchasers, they are looking for those as well. And I'm going to show you some examples of how you can do that. I love that question that came in from Public Speaking Masterclass. Y'all be sure to throw questions in the chat box as they come in because Shamisha is in the house and she's grabbing those questions. So when we get to the end, we can hop through. I love a Q&A lightning round. So we're going to do that too. Okay, I want you to have one piece of data per claim that you make. Let me show you. I'm a very much show and tell kind of person. That's why at the end of this, I'm going to make sure you can grab these slides because if I can see an example of something, I understand it a lot better. So this is an example from Kelsey. Kelsey is one of our students that took copywriting for creatives and she just knocked it out of the park. She's inside the Copy Bar Collective as well. And I love that she said the knot predicts 2.6 million weddings this year. That's a lot of wedding cakes and you're baking your fair share of them. Do you see how by pulling on the weight of a brand like The Knot, so I, sorry, I didn't back up and say she creates sugar flowers that top wedding cakes and she sells to bakeries across the country. She sells to some DIY brides, but predominantly she is selling to wedding planners, to high-end bakeries, so they can just worry about the cake and then the, the assets that go on top that give you that magazine worthy piece of art, that's what she sells to them. So her audience is these, these bakeries, these cake artists that are baking so many cakes every single year. And instead of saying that, she comes in with the data point. She says the not predicts 2.6 million wedding cakes. She's also able to borrow the credibility by mentioning something like the knot that knocks her up a few notches for her clients. And she tells them you're baking your fair share of them. That is what I mean in data versus saying, you sure are baking a lot of cakes this year. It's much more stronger like this. If you can see what I mean there. Okay, another thing that you can do in your copy by to argue well and lawyer up in a good way with your message is you can give what I call, we call it with our students, with our clients, a tough love toast. When I say, and that's why I gave the, the champagne here. When I say tough love toast, when somebody comes on your website, when they read your sales page copy, when they read your services page copy, can you give them some sort of nugget that makes them think, huh? That it's not off putting, but it's a mic drop moment. Huh? I've never thought about it like that before. Tell me a little bit more. That makes me curious. Never thought about that. I guarantee you, those of you who are here and listening, you absolutely have something like this in your back pocket. The minute I speak at a lot of conferences and a lot of events, and when I push people and ask them, like, why do you do what you do? Why'd you get into it? They always have a hot take isn't the right word, but they have this thing they're passionate about why they started. That's probably in the arena where your tough love toast is. I'm going to show you some examples in just a sec, but I can't express how important this is for you to get out in your copy. I know we're just talking about sales pages and landing pages today, and it's important on those, but this is an overall messaging piece that you need in your business. And I am bound and determined to help you figure out what it is. Those of you who I know I've got some members inside TCBC, I've got some CFC students in the chat, say your tough love toast again. This is one of those things that if you've had said it in a while on the internet, say it again. It's one of those things that people need to commit to. Um, I have a client that, that some of you have heard of, her name is Jenna Kutcher, and one time she, she made me laugh because she's so good at hitting, this is one thing she's very good at naturally doing. She'll hit on a message over and over again. She doesn't forget to do it, it seems like. But she has told her story about why she picked up a camera and how she got started in her business so much that one time somebody commented on one of her captions and said, um, take a shot every time Jenna tells this story. And she joked back something like, well, I hope it's water, but that's, that's the level that it needs to be at. You need to say it so much that people know and know you for it. The copy dictates design thing. I know I've like, I've had people say that back to me and I know, I'm like, okay, that has stuck. So if you've heard people say something back to you too, that goes for you guys who are service providers. Those are good little nuggets. That you can start to think, okay, this might be my tough love toast. Um, 
it's really hard for me to not chat back and forth in the chat the whole time because I want to say, do you, guys, do you get this? Do you, are you good? But I got to keep moving for the sake of time. So let me show you a couple of examples of this. You can see what I mean. So this is an example. I know we have some photographers. This is Kayla. She is a photographer. She's been inside of all of our stuff. And this is what I mean, tough love toast. She says, we live in a world where moms are expected to work like they don't have children and raise children like they don't work. Oh man, shot in the heart. I know I'm a mom. I know there's moms in the audience. That is a good one-liner. Do you see what I mean there with a the tough love toast? It's not off-putting, but it's something that makes you go, huh, and lean in a little bit. Tell me more. A lot of you, by not having an opinion or expressing your opinion in your messaging on your sales pages, on your landing pages, in your website, you come across as weak. You come across as not as much of a professional. When you have a, an opinion, people are going to listen. It's also that we all know attract repel. We've heard this before. We know that there's enough clients out there for all of us. That's a whole mindset thing. But I don't want you, but I don't want you to not have an opinion because you're so worried about about not having enough clientele come in. I promise you, if you can lay, throw down the mic and say, this is what I believe and why I do what I do, it's going to make you much more of a stronger candidate for your clients to trust you because you're going to come across as somebody who knows what they're doing. I think I have a couple more examples of this. Let's see. Yes, this is another photographer, Abby Springman. She does this so well. She's a brand photographer. And on her homepage, she has this line. Trust me, the world doesn't need more pictures of you smiling at a laptop. Oh, oh my goodness. How many of us have had brand shoots before where we're sitting there? smiling at our laptop because we don't know other poses to do or other ways to tell our story. She combats and comes right at that. She says, instead, you need a library of strategic photographs that communicates your brand's equity and expertise that don't look like every other brand shoot on the scene. That is what I'm talking about. I think I've got one more. Yep, I do. This is from Chelsea. Again, Chelsea's been inside of our stuff. She says, say goodbye to cookie cutter wedding photos and over dramatic videos. So she's talking to her person. She's saying what they don't want and telling them what they do want innately. Okay, another tip, and I'm gonna give you this frame, I'm kind of giving you all the little bits for your arsenal, and then I'm gonna show you the copy framework itself. So keep tracking with me. But one other way that you can load up your backpack with all the tools you need to get going on filling out this messaging hierarchy is you can do something that I call client and customer voice hacking. If you can say, what your audience or your client or your customer wants to hear back to them better than they can say it themselves, you will win the dollar because you'll win their attention. So get very good at listening. You already have to listen so much to create products, to create whether your product is a product at service or refining your service or you're creating digital downloads, whatever it is that you make. You have to listen to people to know what to make, right? So you're already listening. Get so good at that that you can also mirror back their patterns of speech. I am far more doing reading and listening as a copywriter than I am just writing, especially if I'm deep in a project. I am marinating in the research. I am listening constantly because that sets the course for the whole message. So I hope that sticks with you. If you can say to them something that they want to hear better than they can say it, you'll win the dollar because that's so very powerful. Here's an example. This is Ida and she um, is a show it designer. And actually, I believe she is one of y'all's partners designers now that I think about that. Um, but she had us a moment on her, I believe this is her work with me landing page. So this would be like her services landing page. And she has a line up at the top that says, it's not your work holding you back from charging what you want. And then she talks about that. You've got a breathtaking portfolio. You've got all the pieces. Basically, she's arguing there that it's the design aspect that's holding them back. I saw her at a conference and I complimented her on this page because I'd read it. And I said, um, how did you come up with that? And she laughed. She said, because I was doing what you said and I would hop on calls with my ideal clients and they would always say they would always say that, but not quite like she, she said the minute I started saying, huh, so it's not 
it's not that your work's not good. It's just that it's not shown off well. And they would always be like, yes, that's what I'm trying to say. So do you see how she was able to infer your client? Those of you who hop on sales calls, discovery calls, whatever you want to call those, record them and transcribe them. Always record and transcribe. So then when you're having maybe one or two times a year moments where you're deep updating copy, print them out and highlight them. What are these people saying? Say it back to them. It's so powerful if you can do that. Okay, how am I doing on time? I gotta speed up just a little bit. <laughs> but all of this is easier to implement if you can remember how to spell that European capital where they eat croissants, Paris, P-A-R-I-S. So you're gonna say their problem in the way they do. You're basically copy and pasting verbatim from what you've heard by listening. You're gonna agitate it. You're gonna throw down that mic drop moment with their tough love toast. Remind them what they want. Again, we talked about how to find that. You're doing your, your client and customer voice hacking lawyer up and then explain why you're different or your point of view with a data point. I showed you that example from Kelsey's website, and then you can present your solution. This is a much better way to get people's attention and to draw them in. This is a copywriting framework that works so well. You can use it. You can accordion it out for a whole sales page or landing page. You can even use it in an email or a sales email. I can dive into this more in Q and A if we have time for it. But if you want a primer, I have a whole blog post on the PARIS formula, and there it is right there. Okay, let's keep moving and grooving. Oh, one more tip. I just want to put this out there. That first draft of anything feels a lot like this extremely gross phrase that writer Anne Handley says, and it's so true: "Show up, throw up." If you can just get through. I've joked with the students before, but I need to do it. Um, I have this timer on my desk from Amazon. If I cannot put my booty in the chair and work on something, I set this for 25 minutes. I make myself get the first draft out and that, then I'm good to go. That ripped off the bandaid. I just, you just need to get through that first draft. So I just want to, I was throwing that out there for anybody who absolutely hates writing and thinks that they're so bad at it. You should see my first drafts. You should see anybody's first drafts that you think are a good writer. People that you think are good writers are just really good editors, okay? And I know you can do that as well. Okay, let's get to this last piece. I wanna to talk to you about headlines and subheadlines on your sales pages, on your services pages. So your headline at the top of the page is the first thing that they read. 100% of the traffic that lands on that page sees your headline. Only a few people keep reading past that, but 100% reads the headline. No pressure, right? It has got to be bangering and good. So good. It is the first in the lineup, but it is always the thing that my team and I write last. And I would say a lot of my students, I hear them say that too. It's, they wrote it last. Um, I shared with the members inside the Copy Bar Collective the other week, I always start a sales page or a landing page with what I know, the meat and potatoes of the offer, the specs, the features, what is in my client experience. Start writing there, throw yourself a bone. Write from there, write all the way down, then go up to the top and start writing. If you're ever stuck, even if you're just writing an email about your, you know, your podcast episode that dropped, don't start writing at the top of it. Write about the podcast episode. Give me the five bullet points that you covered in it. Tell me to go check it out. Then start to go back to the top and see how you can edge into it. Um, I also, I was trying to find when I was prepping for this, this photo that Sarah, who runs our agency, took one time. She hand wrote, and I recommend it. I, I try at least 35 different headlines before I pick the one that I want. And I have a template in the shop that has 35 headlines in it. That's where I pulled that number from. But she would do it in a different magic marker and just write down like, like she had just pages out where she would have a writing exercise. I'm telling you this because I don't, a lot of people put so much pressure on themselves because they're trying to write the very top part of the website and they think, oh my gosh, I can't even get this right. Screw the rest of this page. No, that's the hardest part. Throw yourself a softball. Don't start there usually. Remember, we said earlier that people are only reading, what, how much was it? I, I don't want to stop too long to keep, to look in the chat, but it's 20% of the copy on your web page, but 100% reads that headline. So you've got to get that right. And then I also want you to have that get out of your head moment. I don't want you to have lazy headlines and sub headlines that are just, I don't want you, and I saw somebody mention in the chat. No, you don't want to be clever or cute or overly cute in this. You want to be clear, but I also don't want you to be so clear that it's lazy. Like I said about Trina, instead of that, we're saying, 
whatever, I can't go back to that slide right now, but meet the Trina team. She said, we're here to make you look good. So that's not overly clever or overly cute. It's very down the line and clear, but it's also not about Trina, okay? Let's look at a few examples of this. This is Shawnee. She's a student inside CFC. Everything I'm showing you, I wanted to show you because while I showed the one thing at the beginning was a client example that um, I actually wrote that piece. Everything else I've shown you is written by people who are would consider themselves not copywriters. Okay, so that's why I keep coming back to these because I want you to see people that have done this that do not have copywriting businesses. Shawnee says, time is ticking and your to-do list keeps growing. You've got more tasks than time. Raise your hand if that hits home. That's like straight to me. I can absolutely feel that. That's how she started her work with me page. That's a landing page. That's a much more arresting headline than something like, here's some different ways we can work together. Here's my packages. Um, other land, actually, oh, I should have lit my candle before this call. Um, they're great candles. Not an affiliate link, I just think they're great. And I love this about page headline that they have. Have you ever noticed that candles make everything better? We totally agree. That is such a more powerful piece of copy than about other land or shop our products. Okay. One other little tip I can give you. We're doing good on time now. I know I'm a fast talking Southerner, but I always worry that I'm not gonna get through my content. So I think we're gonna be okay, guys. Be specific. I've talked about this with my email list. This is where I'm forgetting your name in the chat, but you had mentioned about clear versus clever in the headlines. And I'm so glad you did. One way you can be clear, but also not so cute that it's, it's fuzzy and we don't know what you're talking about. Just be specific. Just be specific. Um, I first wrote about this when my best friend and I went to a comedian in Atlanta. I mean, I was driving home, I was thinking, why was that so funny? What was it about what she said that made me laugh? And I realized a lot of it was in, and a, comedians do this all the time. They're, they use specifics so well. The story's so believable because they're not saying drinks, they're saying pallets of pineapple spin drift. They're not saying shorts, they're saying knee length duckhead khakis, like the ones we wore in the 90s. They're not saying walked, they're saying swished. It's much more visual because they're giving you specifics. So what I want you to do is get concrete in your copy. Specificity in your copy is going to make your copy so much snappier and more credible. And if you're trying to be funnier or wittier or voicier in your copy, if that is your goal, it's going to help you with that as well. Okay, I have another little bonus tip for you right here. Use verbs that you can see. You're not going to get around never using Amos or Amos was, were, be, being, been. You're not going to get around that. But if you could remember how I just said use swished, not walked. Walked, you can see that swished is more powerful. Uh, this is where an AI tool can come in. Open up chat DPT. Give me 50 action verbs. Like pull some of those out. Um, use thesaurus.com. That is not cheating. I don't know who needs to hear that. I use thesaurus.com all the stinking time. Use verbs that you can see. That is one way instantly to, I've said this before, it's like Jennifer Aniston arm workout, but for your copy it is like pop, an instant pop, it instantly looks stronger. Another thing I want you to do is, like I just said, use tools, thesaurus.com. Use headline templates, plug them into ChatGPT. I have a freebie. Um, I'll talk about it in a minute. I'll hook you up with it. I have a freebie of 13 different headline copywriting templates. Take those, plug them into ChatGPT. Tell ChatGPT who your audience is, what the product is, and see if it can, and say, can come up with 10 different examples using this template and see what it comes up with. Don't like give yourself a, a starting point. Don't start if the, the blinking cursor and a white page freaks you out. Don't start with that. I rarely do. I like to have a, like a chef's mise en place with lots of things there. I like to start like that. If, it, if you're, I don't know, if you're doing crafts, if you like to have everything out, your glue, your all the different things, it's so much more fun than having to create for nothing. And so it's not cheating. You're allowed to do that um, and you should do that. Okay. Here's a recap of what we talked about today. And like I said, I'm going to make sure you get these slides. 
But the first thing we did is we talked about your selling blind spot and how a lot of us sell like we like to be sold. And that is why you need to use copywriting frameworks. You need to menuify your sales page copy. I need to be able to stand back there and scroll down your website. Pick anybody here from the chat, pull up your website, stand back there and scroll. And I can understand the argument that you're trying to make. Write dynamic crossheads. Don't write lazy ones, but write ones that give a little bit more voice and tell what it's about. And I don't want you to be afraid of long copy. Okay, people will still scroll. I didn't say this earlier, but does anybody remember when you could like get to the end of Pinterest? I remember sitting in the townhouse I lived in. It was probably 20, maybe like 2013. And I remember at night, that was like my routine. I would scroll. Pinterest, I would get to the end of Pinterest. I'd be like, okay, now I'll read my book. <laughs> LOL. That is like not the internet now. We have like scrolling that lasts forever. Our news feeds could go on forever. People are trained to scroll now. They're happy to scroll. That's they're used to doing that. But they won't do that if they can't figure out where to go. They're not seeing what they're looking for, or it's boring. Okay. Then I want you to lawyer up. I want you to give data points that express any claim you're trying to make. I want you to have an opinion. I want you to express it. I want you to know that people trust people that have opinions. We're attracted to people that have an opinion. You don't sound like vanilla ice cream. You sound like an expert. I want you to say that. And I want you to get better than your audiences at mirroring back their speech patterns and what they say. I also want you to write great headlines, use specificity in there, lean on tools, templates and AI tools. And I also want you to write your headlines last. Okay. Throw yourself a bone. There has never been a better time to write like you sound, to write like you actually talk. You can do this and beat the bots. So if you've learned one thing today, I want you to update one part of your sales page or a landing page. And if you've never done it before, I want you to update your headline. I want you to write a better headline. I have in my shop, and I'm going to give you um, the, the full link for this for those of you who don't want a QR code, but for those of you that this is a little bit easier, you can open this. I have a $25 gift card for you to use in my shop, the copy bar, and I have in there 35 headline copywriting templates. If your ears perked up when I said you can just take headline copywriting templates and plug those into an AI tool and see what comes out, voila, you can get going on that. If you do update a headline, I would love, or you write your tough love toast copy, I would love it if you tag me on Instagram. Um, I, I adore giving people feedback on their copy. It makes me come alive. It's so fun. And so I would love to try to catch that on the internet. I know things move fast with stories, but please tag me if you can. I'd love to look at things. And again, I have that. This is basically the goodie pack. This is the slides. This is that $25 gift card. And this is those 200 AI prompts that you can use and rev up a little junior copywriting bot team. So there is the code and the link for that. Shamisha may be able to drop it in the chat is ashlandwrites.com backslash show it. All one word, pretty easy. So ashlandwrites.com backslash show it. And that is where you can grab that and get going. So, oh, we did it. I did it on time. So we get to move to Q&A. Um, Shamisha, I guess I'm good to go ahead and stop screen sharing and okay. pop over there. There we go. Awesome. That was so good. So much information. So hopefully you guys took some notes, um, but we are recording this live. So you can always come back to this link and re-listen to all of the information that Ashlyn presented today or gave to you. Um, so we are starting Q&A. We do have a few questions um, that came through. Um, and I know you answered the one um, from, she's under the name Public Speaking Masterclass um, on like the between cute and clear and yes. like, where do you Such play that? Good question. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that was we a great question. I think always veer on the side of clear over clever. Um, but you can get around that by being specific. Specific is not being um, cutesy. Specific mm -hmm. is helping them understand even more concrete what you mean. That just helps back it up even more. Yes. Awesome. Um, okay. So we have another question from Hazel Shanks. Um, she asked, you said there were four buying styles and you mentioned EMO. What are the other three? Yes. Okay. So emo, I was saying is like our emo purchaser. Let me go to, 
I wish I could share. If you go to ashlandwrites.com slash quiz, you can see it. But um, basically you have, and it's based off of the Herman whole brain style. That's something that I studied when I was a publicist and worked in corporate marketing. And then the more I, I left, I went out on my own, like all of us have done. And I realized as I was writing copies, like hold the phone, that's still happening over here. And so what those different buying styles are, some people are, I'll start on the, the really like emo side of the brain. Some people really want to know how they're going to fit. And I have like quippy names for all of these inside the quiz, which I can't name off the top of my head right now, of course, because I'm asked on the spot. But one person is going to be very much the creative classic visionary. They're going to be like, I want to change the world. Think Natalie Frank. Whenever I think of like, yes. like she's a <laughs> classic, yes. classic example. I told her that too. So that's going to be one type of buying mm -hmm. style. You're going to have another type that wants to know, they want the heart pull. They want to know, oh, tell me the stories. They want the warm and the fuzzy. That's going to get them every single time. So they're more story oriented. They want to they want to help people, yes, and they're focused on people, but they're focused on people in a little bit of a different way. Then you've got people who are very numbers and facts driven. They want to know how much this is going to cost them, how much is going to cost them every single month. They're looking at all the terms and services. They're looking at everything to make sure, do I need every single thing that's in this or can I negotiate with this one? Like those are your people that are just like really in the weeds with numbers. Um, Sheena Skidmore, for those of you who, if you know who she is, uh, a lot of math brains fall or financial people. I don't know if we have anybody that's financial on the call. You usually fall into this. And then we have the people that are, um, those of you who write something on your to-do list just to check it off. You're another buying style. You're very planning focused. You're very goals oriented focused. You want to purchase something because this is on your to-do list that you want to do this one day. And so you're going to go ahead and go for it. Mm -hmm. um, you're very much attracted to the parts of the, and that's the thing too. Each of these styles has different pieces on the sales page. Can you see how some of these are going to be attracted to the testimonials? And that's where you're going to get them. They want the store. They want paint the picture of me where I'm going to be when I finish this product. That's what they want. Then you've got people who really want that um, investment section. They need to see everything line itemed out like their grocery store receipt because mm -hmm. they're not going to trust you unless they can see that. And then you've got other people who want to know, okay, when I click that button, exactly what happens. How many days is this going to take me? How much time every day is this going to take me? So everybody has different things that they want answered. And that's why more of a long form landing your sales page works because it speaks to the different styles. And like I said, you can skip over the sections that you don't really care about and you can focus on the ones you do. Yes. That's so great. So good. Um, so. All right. We had a question from Ariel Thomas. She, you were talking about using verbs um, and she was saying, asking, do you have some example of verbs that you would use in your copy? Oh, uh, well, it looks like Ashlyn froze technology, guys. Um, so we will wait a couple minutes, um, a couple seconds to see if she hops back on. Um, but if you have any other additional questions um, for her, please put them in the chat. I know we were going to talk about potentially testing your copy, um, doing some like A-B testing to see what works for your audience and what would get you higher conversion and click rates. Um, and then also getting someone after you've written the copy for your website, um, potentially getting someone to check your copy, overview it, rewrite it. And then also talking about Ashlyn's um, group that she has um, and what it would take to be a part of her um, group. Um, oh, are we back on? Am I back? Hello, you're back. Testing one, two. Oh, okay. Okay, yay. Awesome. Nice hands. Um, okay, I remember the last two questions. The first one was so good. It was verbs. Yes, verbs. verbs. Example of verbs. Yes. Example, glittered, flashed, uh, um, spit. Uh, if you can see it, if you can see it in your head, it's mm. an action verb. Um, just Google action verb right now and you'll see words that come up that are those. I know this will be like throwback to grammar school when you were having to learn <laughs> these things, but basically verbs that are not is, am, are, have, things like that. Mm -hmm. Verbs that um, 
And I've got some lists on my Insta- my Instagram account is at Ashlyn S. Carter. I've done a few verb lists from okay. time to time, like say this, not that. And so that's where you can look too. But um, there's, yeah, there's not like ones that convert better or don't. It's just going to make your writing much more stronger. And so you that's one editing tip I always do. I never, I never worry about that while I'm writing. Okay. I don't worry about half this stuff when I'm writing my first draft. I am the show up, throw up phrase, I, phase. I'm getting it out, getting it on paper. These, like I said, people you think are good writers are just really good editors. This is something that when I'm going through, like before I send out an email blast, I'll go through and see, do I see any lame verbs in here that aren't good? And then I pull up handy dandy thesaurus and find a better one. I do not rely on my brain to come up with all of these words. I use <laughs> tools. I use tools all the time. Yes. Awesome. It is okay yes. to use tools. <laughs> you don't have to have it, it all. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay. Awesome. So, um, we, I have some questions. It looks like we didn't have any more questions in the chat, but I wanted, I know a big thing with, um, copywriting is like doing testing. Um, so yeah. like I know here at show, like we have people come in and like just go through the website, ask whatever questions they have, whatever is confusing. Now, is there any type of way to do testing for the copy of your website? Yes, I'm so so in I have a whole module about this in copywriting create for creatives because I this is where the rubber meets the road. You do not get to be the arbiter or the decider of what works, what works on what works and what doesn't on your website. Mm -hmm. Science, facts, math, data points, anecdotal evidence that gets to tell us your customers. You don't get to tell me if you think you're clear or not. Your customers get to tell me that. Mm -hmm. So if you can, and I've got lots of, if somebody's like interested in a deep dive, I could pull together a resource list. You can email us at hello at ashlandwrites.com. If there's anything I've dropped today that you're like, I want more, please email us. Um, I always tell people I've been doing this seven years now. Odds are I have a YouTube or a freebie about it, whatever question you have. <laughs> yeah. um, but you can, one thing you can do, I have a YouTube somewhere about it, usertesting.com hotjar.com. Those are two of my very favorite websites. After you've gone live with your new website or your new sales page, run it through a tool like that to test. Mm -hmm. um, and user testing is so great because you can get a perfect stranger to, and you can narrow it down. I need a girl between the ages of 25 and 30 who has an interest in skincare mm -hmm. to look at this website and tell me what she thinks. But you can, you'll get a voice recording of them clicking through it and saying what they think. And it hurts so good to hear, but it is yeah. unbelievably enlightening. It will help so much. So That's those awesome. are a couple of ways you can test. One thing to always look at is make sure that you can find, I know Shemisha, we've talked about this before. Make sure you can always measure how many unique views are hitting your sales page mm -hmm. so you can then figure out and decide what is the one action you want them to take. So on your landing page, it's probably like sign up for the freebie yes. or download this, register for the webinar. There are certain conversion rates that you want to hit those. I have an Instagram post. It says something like 12 conversion rates creatives need to know. Go to that post and look at it and back pocket it. You need to be able to tell me with like your feelings don't get to decide. Oh, my website is just not working. Nobody's purchasing. The math gets to tell us if that is working or not, because there's a place where there's a percentage of people that need to be signing up for your service for every amount that lands on your website and so on exactly. and so forth. So that's one piece of math that everybody can know. And I break it down a little bit more in that post on my Instagram. There you go. So good. Um, and then I think coming to your writing, um, editing your copy, is, yes. is there some tools or anything out there to make sure, you know, that you didn't misspell something or, you know, yes. <laughs> you missed something. Yes. Do you have some suggestions for that? Absolutely. I, I have, here's my three <laughs> favorite go-to tips on this. So one, make sure you have Grammarly installed. If AI oh, writing, <laughs> so good, right? If AI freaks you out, but you use Grammarly, congratulations, you're already using AI. You just didn't <laughs> yeah. know it. So it's not that scary. Um, you can get by very well with the free Grammarly account. Mm -hmm. So have that. That's going to catch things like passive voice, misspellings. It's it's so great. So have that installed. Um, another thing is the read out loud test. This mm -hmm. is paramount. Before you publish anything, 
Read it out loud. You're going to sound crazy if you're in your office by yourself. You have to do this. You will catch 99% of mistakes. And then you also need to employ while you're doing that, the breath test, I'm going to call it. If you, a lot of people, creatives, write really long sentences. If you come up for breath in a sentence when you're reading it out loud, it needs punctuation or you need to chop it up. It's too okay. long. So yeah. that's one thing to do. And then a third tip is the $100 bill test. Pretend I'm standing over your shoulder and I've got a fresh stack of $100 bills and I'll give you one for every word you can remove while you're editing. And so you have to then make the decision. Is it worth keeping it or is it worth taking the $100 bill for? Okay. Awesome. <laughs> so great. I'm gonna, I use Grammarly, but those other ones are really good that I might implement in there. Okay. Um, let's check the chat, see if we had any other questions. It doesn't look like it, but... Guys, Great. if you have some questions that just pop up, um, feel free to reach out to Ashlyn uh, on Instagram, Ashlyn S. Carter, correct? Yep. On yep, Instagram, or if you have any other uh, additional questions, you can reach out to her on her email at hello at ashlynwrites.com. Um, let me see. And then you can head to ashlynwrites.com slash show it if you want to grab like the slides from today, the yes. examples. Um, that coupon code is in there and the 200 prompts too. Those, that little packet of goodies will help you as a swag bag. Yes. Awesome. Well, thanks guys. Thanks for coming. Ashlyn, thank you so much for coming and bringing all the knowledge today. Um, it was great. And guys, we will see you next time. Have a great day. All right.